Hello, listeners. This is Kat, and welcome back to Put Your Hands Up Podfix. This will be the continuation of Little Acts of Kindness. This will be Part 70, Chapter 70, entitled Teammates. Izuku smiled as he entered the classroom. Good morning, Aizawa greeted him. Good morning, Aizawa-sensei, he responded. Black eyes looked over him, pausing on the golden beads in his hair. The man raised an eyebrow at him, and Izuku blushed. Tokiyami uh, added it during our sleepover, and it, it looks nice. Aizawa just gave a nod. The two spent the rest of the morning in silence, the teacher helping him with JSL. Even if Izuku didn't immediately need it, it was still a valuable skill to have. Eventually, Ida Tenya showed up, followed by other students. Tenya had removed the beads and ribbons out of his hair, though Denki kept his in, just like he said he would. Fumikage also kept his in, preening when Ashido complimented him. The bell rang, signifying the start of homeroom, and Aizawa-sensei stood up from where he had been sitting. Today, teams for the Civil War will be announced. Today is also the only day we will give you to plan during school. Any further planning will be done on your own time. But before that, he paused, bending down and pulling out a box from behind his desk. I have replaced the fidget devices. The class cheered. Aizawa allowed it for a moment, before narrowing his eyes at them, causing them all to fall silent. He gave a nod of approval as he stepped over to his computer. Aizawa clicked a button, and the projector turned on as he pulled down the screen. Soon a wheel with a ton of names on it was showing, with an empty column on either side of it. On this wheel is the name of every student in the first year hero courses. The first name that is picked will be a member of the hero team. The second name picked will be a member of the villain team, and so on and so forth. Once the two teams have been decided, the names of the heroes will be inputted and the leader will be selected. Tanya raised his hand. Aizawa nodded to him. How will the villain leader be picked? During afternoon classes, the two teams will be separated and provided with more information. At this time, the villains will be informed who their leader is. Sensei, if this is random, then how will Class B learn who's on what teams? Ojiro asked after raising a hand. Aizawa gestured to the projector. This is set up to display the same thing between both of our classes. As he spoke, the wheel started to spin. As you can see, Vlad has already started it. It took a few minutes, but soon all the names were sorted into two columns. For the hero team, Todoroki, Bakugo, Yagirozu, Shiyazaki, Hananuki, Tokage, Uraraka, Kamori, Jiro, Ojiro, Asui, Kororo, Kendo, Pony, Tetsu Tetsu, Fukudashi, Shota, Ida, Tokiyami, and Shinso. For the villain team, Midoriya, Shoji, Kirishima, Kaminari, Mineta, Yanagi, Sato, Ashido, Aoyama, Hagekure, Koda, Sero, Aiwaze, Kaibara, Kamakiri, Kodai, Shishida, Subaraba, Bondo, Rin, and Monoma. It was unbalanced. The obvious powerhouse students were on the hero team. Izuku swallowed, seeing as he was on the villain team. They were at a major disadvantage. Now for the hero leader. Aizawa clicked a button, and the wheel on the screen spun. It spun for what seemed like an eternity before slowing down and coming to a stop. Congratulations. Shinzo Itoshi is the leader of the hero team. Me, the boy muttered, and the class turned to him. He raised a hand. Can I pass leadership to someone else? Aizawa snorted. Nope. You're stuck with it. Cool, guess I'll die now. Tenya gasped. No, you're not allowed to die. We need you to lead us to victory. Chill, it was a joke. I don't plan on actually dying, Shinzo said, waving a hand dismissively, then blinked. Wait, the only reason you don't want me to die is so that I can lead you for the school exercise? No, of course not, but school is very important, Tenya said, chopping his hand down as he nodded his head. Ida fears being expelled more than death. Todoroki informed the class with a dull tone. Izuku reluctantly nodded his head, agreeing with that. With that out of the way, now it's time for classes to start, Aizawa said, getting up and leaving the room as the bell rang. A few minutes later, Yagi came in, and the ending bell rang too. All too quickly, the classes seemed to pass by until it was lunch. Message from Nezu Meet in the central room. Izuku didn't respond to the message, just said goodbye to his friends, and walked for a minute until he was alone. Pulling out his phone, he opened the app and soon was in the vents. It took another couple minutes for him to make it to the central room. 
Nezu smiled. Good, I'm glad you were here, Midoriya. First, I would like to apologize. Izuku blinked, tilting his head. Aizawa Kuners informed me that I have been going a bit too far in my testing, such as last week when I had you go after Mirio Kun. I want to make it clear that you can tell me no if you're ever uncomfortable with doing anything. I c can say n no, Izuku questioned, making sure he heard right. Yes, I'm sorry if that wasn't clear before. I get a bit carried away with myself at times. That's why today I wish to discuss with you my plan for your year. Do you remember when I first told you about Jim Zeta? Izuku nodded, recalling the principal's words from a few weeks ago. The gym is a bit of a drive, since it's not usually used until your third year. Though I might take your class for an afternoon to the gym, I think it would be useful to see how well the first years do on the test, as you guys don't have as much practical experience as the third years. Speaking of experience, though, your class has encountered villains, so perhaps I should use Class 1B as a control test, as they will only have the internship for practical experience, while your class will have the USJ and the internship. At that time, I mentioned that it might be interesting to test both the first-year classes in Jim Zeta, despite the fact I normally hold off till third year. Do you think that Jim Zeta would be a bad idea? Izuku frowned as he thought about it. While he had been terrified doing Jim Zeta, and had gotten fairly injured, it was definitely an interesting experience, and it had served its purpose. He found himself responding to situations faster. You mentioned wanting to see how our... Experiences played into our handling of Jim Zeta. Wouldn't my t taking part in the tests skew the results? Izuku questioned. Yes. During the two classes, I will have you helping me in the booth. It will be a valuable experience for you, while also making sure I don't go overboard during the tests. Of course, we will keep it on the easy level. Izuku gave a slow nod. I think it should be fine, so long as Recovery Girl is nearby, just in case. Excellent. Now, as we still have a few minutes before lunch is over, how about we go over your analysis? He gave a small smile and nodded. Izuku was scribbling away in his notebook when the door opened and Vlad King showed up. Behind him stood several of his students. Those on the villain team, follow me. Izuku stood up, seeing his fellow villain classmates stand as well. He headed after the 1B teacher through the halls of the school and out to Jim Sigma. This gym's completely soundproof. No sound in, no sound out. Line up and come grab your rule packets. It's uh, also known as Mike's Screaming Room, Izuku whispered to Denki and Nato, who were standing near him. Apparently Nato had also kept the beads and ribbons in his hair, which was cool. Is this where he trained you to control voice? Denki questioned. Y yeah The line moved forward until every student had the villain packet of information. All right, before you start looking through the rules, there's one more thing to do. Your leader. Vlad pulled out his phone, clicking on it and started projecting a screen. On it was the wheel. He pressed his phone screen and it started spinning. 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 Everyone seemed to be leaning forward, wondering who would become the leader of the villain team. Finally, it started to slow down. Izuku felt as if a bucket of ice water was dumped over him, as everyone turned to look at him. He was the leader of the villain team. He's the leader of our team? One of the Class B kids with short, spiky black hair commented. Another with pale skin and a green mohawk snorted. Isn't he the kid who can't even speak? Oi, I was a Kamakiri, shut your mouths, Nato snapped. Izuka here is easily one of the strongest members of our team, and smart as hell too. I bet he already has a few ideas. Izuka swallowed, giving a small nod, because he did have some ideas. R right. First, I would like everyone to I introduce themselves. Since we're a team, we need to know each other's abilities. He hesitated, then said, I'll s start. My name is Midori Izuku. My work is called bonding. It allows me to bond with a person and p permanently copy their quirk. B but I have a limit to how many people I c can bond with. C currently, I have erasure, voice, strength enhancement, and electric barrier. And one more, but he was keeping that as an ace, just in case. Nato grinned. I'm Monoma Nato. My quirk is copy. I can copy up to three quirks for up to five minutes. As Nato spoke, he pulled out his notebook and started to write down what everyone was saying. Mostly, it was for the 1B students, since he didn't know that much about them. But there was still the chance for his classmates to give some new information. Hi, I'm Ashidomina. My quirk is acid. It lets me secrete acid from my skin, and I can change its acidity and how thick and liquidy it is. 
I'm Hagakure Toru. My quirk makes me invisible, Hagakure said, which reminded Izuku that he had some theories about that which might prove useful to this exercise. Hello, I'm Aoyama Yuga, and my quirk is the beautiful and flashy naval laser. I'm Awaze Yozetsu. My quirk is weld, the spiky-haired boy from earlier said simply. C can you please g give more details? Izuku requested, shrinking back as the boy glared at him. Sure, whatever. My quirk lets me weld together any organic or inorganic material so long as I'm touching them. Th thank you, Izuku responded, writing that down. I'm the guy you come to if you need to patch a hole. Saro Hanta, my quirk is tape, Saro said, holding up his elbows. I'm Mineta Minoru. My quirk is Popov. Let's me pluck these balls from my hair and stick to everything but myself. If you need your phone charged, I'm your guy, Kaminari Denki. My quirk is called electricity. Kinda simple. If you want to talk about simple quirks, then I have the most basic. My quirk is hardening. I'm basically like Tetsu Tetsu from your class, Kirishima said, looking at some of the 1B students. My name is Kirishima Eijiro. This fight is going to be super manly. My name is Bondo Kojiro. My quirk lets me create a glue-like substance from my head. The boy with a head like a glue top said. I'm Reen. My quirk is scales. It's really good for defense. The boy with small eyes and braided hair spoke up in a plain voice. My quirk is solid air. It lets me solidify the air that I breathe out. I'm really excited to be doing this with you all. I just hope we can beat the hero team. We seem to get a bit unlucky in the matchups. A guy with short spiky black hair said. What's your name? Oh, sorry, I'm Subaraba. I am Yanagi Reiko. My quirk is poltergeist. It lets me control nearby objects. A girl with silver hair murmured, just loud enough to be heard. Shoji Mezo. My quirk is duple arms. I have these extra arms and I can create other parts of my body on them, such as mouths, noses, ears, and eyes. So, you could create a... Subaraba started to ask, waggling his eyebrows. Yes. Shoji answered. You didn't even let me finish. Shoji just stared at Subaraba. You ask, in the exact same way as Mineta asked. Realizing exactly what Shoji and Subaraba were talking about, Izugu flushed. M moving on. I'm Sato. My quirk is Sugar Rush, the taller boy said, not looking up. Actually, now that Izuku thought about it, Sato had been acting strange all morning. Maybe he could talk to the boy. Sato was pretty nice, after all, and brought those amazing desserts. Hey, I'm Kaibara Sen. I'm like your everyday average person, but my quirk is gyrate. It allows me to rotate myself rapidly, and I can rotate individual limbs. Pretty good for breaking things. Kodai Yui. Size. I can change the size of items. The black-haired girl said bluntly. Koda Koji. Koda started to fingerspell. I don't know sign language, Iwaze said, grimacing. Nato scoffed. You should learn, then. His name is Koda. Nato nodded to Koda. I'll translate. Koda gave a smile and continued to sign. Koda's quirk is called Annie Voice. It lets him control any creature in the animal kingdom. Koda gave a nod. My quirk is razor sharp. I can create blades. My name is Kamakiri Togaru, the girl with the green mohawk said. Greetings, everyone. I am Shishida Jirota. My quirk is called Beast, and it allows me to transform into an animalistic form. Uh... All right. Thank, thank you, everyone. This will help me in creating a plan. I think we should study the rule packet for the rest of the period, but one last thing. Whatever you do, do not lose your packet. We don't want the heroes knowing what we can and cannot do, nor do we want them to know what we need to do to win. Uh, on the other hand, if you can, take pictures of the heroes' rule packet. I don't think they will guard their packets as closely, but... I also don't want them to know that we looked at it. Why should we figure out what the packets say? They should have the same information we were given the other day, right? Kamakiri questioned. Y you would think so, but I think there might be some information we weren't given that they would have. Like what? Times, specifically the starting and ending time. When I asked Aizawa Sensei, he said the information would be in the packet, which is odd. Something like that shouldn't need to be in the packet unless it was different, right? That makes sense, Kamigiri reluctantly agreed. With that, the group fell silent as they read through the information in the packet.
All right, listeners, this concludes Chapter 70, kind of an intro of what the team is going to look like for the upcoming exercise. And I really like that the author included an apology from Nezu for like overstepping with Izuku. I thought that was pretty cool, um, really showing that there's a lot of pride from Nezu for the mentor relationship that he has with Izuku. So I think that was really great. I also like at the intro of it that Izuku's still struggling a little bit with slipping up on the names of his friends that he started using first names. So I think that that was pretty great too. And I just, I don't know. I like the fact that each each character on the villain team got a chance to kind of do a little short spiel of an introduction. So let me know your overall thoughts and reactions to this chapter. Chapter 71 will be up next. I hope you all are still enjoying this fic. And as always, thank you all so much for listening. <laughs>